Hello and welcome to our worship for Sunday, the 13th of September, the 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time. In the coming weeks, we will be filming indoors with our midweek services. So I've come outside, perhaps for the last time this year, to record. Whoever you are, whichever congregation you are joining us from, or indeed none at all, you are most welcome to worship with us. We begin by the words inspired by our psalm for today. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Let all that was in us bless God's holy name. For God forgives our iniquities, heals our brokenness, and crowns us with steadfast love. Our Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and quick to release it, and brings justice for all who are oppressed. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, let all that is within us bless God's holy name. Let us sing and sing out. <laughs> Let us pray. We come before you, O God, with our words, words of praise, words of confession, words for ourselves and words for others. You are everything to us. There is no silence as eloquent as yours. We praise and revere you. There is no love like your love, no tenderness so attuned to our brokenness and pain, no forgiveness so all-encompassing that in us you create a clean heart, a new beginning, a fresh start. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he is my salvation. Most gracious God, we are on the road, and in Jesus Christ you have wonderfully come to meet us, touch us, forgive us, heal us. Your spirit helps us. On our own we remain at a distance, but you bring us into your company and into the company with other people. Help us to walk wisely, to walk in your ways and to do those good things which you have prepared for us to do through Jesus Christ. Speak to us. Speak to us, God, in our gatherings today. Your word is a light for our feet, a lamp for our path. We don't ask to understand everything. We do ask to see clearly the path in front of us. We don't ask for immediate perfection, but we do ask for practical holiness. We don't ask vaguely for better worlds. We ask for strength to make the world better where we are. May our worship make a difference to us, body, mind and spirit, as we press towards the goal the sake of our upward call in Christ Jesus. Beyond your speaking to us, beyond our speaking to you, we seek your glory. 
good and gracious is the Lord, and we delight and acknowledge it. You deserve praise and honour, for you made all things. You hold all things in being, and you make all things new. Heavenly Father, place your law in our minds. Write it once more on our hearts, that we might know you with a deeper intimacy. Let us see the risen Christ, the living word rise up from the written word. In the silence, through prayer, meditation, with the eyes of our soul. Almighty God, creator and sustainer, who brings spiritual health and healing and wholeness, your spirit like a golden thread running through the cloth of creation. We still ourselves in silence, at rest, at peace that the silence of eternity gently fill our souls. We praise you for your creation, for its beauty and infinite diversity, and in humanity, for our capacity for consciousness, rational thought and love. We thank you for your self-revelation in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. In him, in prayer and study, we discern your wisdom, your presence, comfort and direction. We are grateful for the Spirit's presence, the breath within our breath, the Spirit within our soul, the one who invites. Lead us to sit within the circle of love of the Trinity, in silence, listening intimately to the silence of God. And let us all join the chorus of angels as we say the prayer that has been taught down the ages our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. My name is Lynn Podger and I'm a member of Maniki and Newbiggin and Murrows and Teelin Church. And what's your favourite colour? I just like all colours but I've tried to narrow it down to blue and green for you today. Do you have any hobbies or interests? I'm quite art and crafty. Do you have a favourite meal? Christmas dinner. And what has been the toughest thing for you since mid-March? This. <laughs> I, know, I know how my voice sounds. It's not nice. Okay. How have you lived out your faith during this time? Um, I think, I would hope I've lived it out as I always do. And that your... Um, when you have faith, you respond to a situation. So I don't necessarily see your face changing. Okay. Have there been any positives? If so, what? Um, yes, it's been nice to have a time to chill and relax, um, to be able to sort our house out and our garden because we had quite a busy year last year. So just a chance to chill has been really nice. Okay. What are your hopes and prayers for the future? Um, I'm really quite excited because the Church of Scotland seems to um, have caught hold this is a time for change. The Church of Scotland is delighted in the way that they have received feedback from the way they've had to cope with this situation and um, they've admitted that what happened in seven days when we had to close the church would have taken years to achieve through deliverances and they're really excited with the feedback they're getting and they're looking at ways of um, how we can continue to reach and engage with a whole new set of people and I hope my prayer is that we can continue to do this and we can engage with everyone and move forward and 
just be what the church should be. And is there anything you would like others to pray for in your life? Um, at the moment, Tim and I have entered yet another new uh, area to go to. We're at a point where we have to um, probably make new decisions and it would be really nice to have some help with that in the form of prayers. I uh, always like to be healthy if possible. Um, personally, I think I need to let myself trust God more instead of thinking, yeah, I've got this one, I can manage this and just go ahead and do it because it doesn't work like that. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. sorry. Can I have your name and congregation? My name's Tim Podger and I'm a member of Maniki, New Begin, Murrows and Teeling. I'm also the Treasurer and Presbytery Commissioner and I'm married to the session clerk, Lynn. And what's your favourite colour? Uh, the challenge with living with somebody who's studied art is that um, hey, I've got to manage with that, but I like a sort of burgundy range, this, this sort of colour I'm wearing today. Uh, any hobbies and interests? Uh, Lynn might say recycling, um, but my main hobby is philately. Um, some of you might call that stamp collecting, um, but I don't really collect stamps. Um, there's a lot more to the hobby than that. Um, and I've exhibited internationally and won awards, um, but my main interest is the research and I've uh, published uh, a few articles and also had a book published. Okay. And your favourite meal? Um, some might not call it a meal, but um, a plate of cooked fresh vegetables, um, but maybe raw if, if not that. What has been the toughest thing for you since mid-March? If I'm honest, um, I've been made redundant and all that entails, that's been a tough thing. And how have you lived out your faith during this time? That's been a, a bit of a challenge. I took the question of being, you know, what have I been doing? Um, and apart from doing daily devotions um, anyway, um, Lynn and I have been listening to the night prayers. In fact, the other evening, two Mondays ago, Fee was doing the night prayers and I was cutting Lynn's hair and she was reading from Luke's gospel about uh, God has counted every hair on your head just as I was cutting off Lynn's hair so that was that but the the main thing is that we've taken to do the study on a Sunday evening uh, with Fee studying the story uh, Luke's gospel and Acts um, and the preparation for that so these have been personal things about preparation for the future have there been any positive positives? If so, what? Uh, this goes contrary that, yes, a positive of being made redundant. Um, a chance to reevaluate um, our lives. Um, you know, lockdown made us appreciate that there's a lot more that we've got. Um, and so, yeah, the positive of that is we've had time to evaluate and, and have time more together rather than normally, which we've been doing, or I've been doing very much, rushing around and travel and things for business. So. Mm. And what are your hopes and prayers for the future? Where I think is that I'd like us to move as one as God's family. Um, there's a lot for us to do as Christians. Um, it's tough, but I think we need to work out what we can do, um, each, other, each of us can do um, to, to grow God's family. Is there anything you would like to pray for, ask others to pray for in your life? There is. Um, it's really discernment for the next phase of my life. Um, not, not just my life, uh, for the life of Lynn uh, and myself together as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain, or me who him to death pursued? Amazing love. How can it be that thou, my God, choose thy for me? Amazing, Amazing love. love, how can it be, can it be that thou, my God, choose thy for me?
of love divine. Tis mercy all let her adore, let angel minds inquire no more. Tis mercy, Tis mercy all let her let her Testament, Romans 14, verses 1 to 12, and it's on page 201, if anyone wants to follow it with me. Welcome the person who is weak in faith, but do not argue with him about his personal opinions. One person's faith allows him to eat anything, but the person who is weak in the faith eats only vegetables. The person who will eat anything is not to despise the one who doesn't, while the one who eats only vegetables is not to pass judgment on the one who will eat anything, for God has accepted him. Who are you to judge the servant of someone else? It is his own master who will decide whether he succeeds or fails, and he will succeed because the Lord is able to make him succeed. One person thinks that a certain day is more important than other days, while someone else thinks that all days are the same. Each one should firmly make up his own mind. Whoever thinks highly of a certain day does so in honour of the Lord. Whoever will eat anything does so in honour of the Lord. 
because he gives thanks to God for the food. Whoever refuses to eat certain things does so in honour of the Lord, and he gives thanks to God. None of us lives for himself only. None of us dies for himself only. If we live, it is for the Lord that we live, and if we die, it is for the Lord that we die. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For Christ died and rose to life in order to be the Lord of the living and of the dead. You then, who eat only vegetables, why do you pass judgment on your brother? And you who eat anything, why do you despise your brother? All of us will stand before God to be judged by him. For the scripture says, As surely as I am the living God, says the Lord, everyone will kneel before me, and everyone will confess that I am God. Every one of us then will have to give an account of himself to God. Amen. Our second Bible reading today is Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, if my brother keeps on sinning against me, how many times do I have to forgive him? Seven times? No, not seven times, answered Jesus, but seventy times seven, because the kingdom of heaven is like this. Once there was a king who decided to check on his servants' accounts. He had just begun to do so when one of them was brought in who owed him millions of pounds. The servant did not have enough to pay his debt, so the king ordered him to be sold as a slave with his wife and his children and all that he had in order to pay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before the king. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay you everything. The king felt sorry for him, so he forgave him the debt and let him go. Then the man went out and met one of his fellow servants, who owed him a few pounds. He grabbed him and started choking him. Pay back what you owe me, he said. His fellow servant fell down and begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had him thrown into jail until he should pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were very upset and went to the king and told him everything. So he called the servant in. You worthless slave, he said. I forgave you the whole amount you owed me, just because you asked me to. You should have had mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had mercy on you. The king was very angry, and he sent the servant to jail to be punished until he should pay back the whole amounts. And Jesus concluded, That is how my Father in heaven will treat every one of you, unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Amen. Oh, 
Let us pray. Open our ears, O Lord, to hear your word and know your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our souls that we may serve you in love this day and always. Amen. Each and every one of us will have stories of welcome. And it comes across various aspects of life. So it might be a new house you've moved into or a new job. Perhaps you've decided to take up a new sport or hobby. And there's the meeting of future in-laws as well, isn't there? In each of these situations, how we are welcomed matters, doesn't it? It changes how we feel about ourselves in that moment and how we feel about other people. And it very probably impacts on our future behaviour as well. How we're welcomed into a new home might then look about like how we interact with our neighbours. How we're welcomed into a new job might show up how we enjoy or otherwise going to work. If we're not welcomed well into a new hobby or sport, we're probably more likely to give it up. And hey, with our in-laws, we've got all those future family events to look forward to or otherwise. Welcome in to church and to church is similar, but so much more. We will, I'm sure, have some wonderful stories in this line and perhaps some horrors as well. Some of you may not have visited many other churches and some of you might be the members of your current congregation because of how you were welcomed. For many years I visited a whole range of churches, first during my days in the Navy where I was travelling or moving a lot and then as a student minister. I remember being welcome to one congregation so much that a couple invited me to their homes for lunch after my first Sunday. I also remember being places where I felt like a complete fish out of water. And actually those initial welcomes aren't necessarily reflective of a congregation, but they have that impact nonetheless. Let me share two stories with you from my time as a student. Both stories come when I was looking at different congregations as to where I might want to do a placement. And the first one I went to, I kind of snuck in just as the service was sat starting and I sat in a pew and throughout the service, nobody interacted with me. At the end of the service, I sat there wondering what to do. People walked in and out of pews around me and most people didn't even look at me, let alone say hello. I thought I might try and go for a cup of coffee, but I hadn't a clue where I was going in this maze of a church building. And when I eventually found the queue, again, no one spoke to me. And I felt so awkward and so out of place that I left. The second one was a weird introduction all of my own making. This was a congregation that changed its service times over the summer period and I hadn't bothered to check a different time. So I snuck in at the back of a, a service and like a lot of times I just assumed that I was a couple of minutes late only to be in the last hymn of the last, um, so the last verse of the last hymn and had the benediction pronounced. I snuck out quite quickly at the back again. But the person who had been leading worship recognised me and got back in touch. Now, both of these congregations in different ways came to feel like home for me in different ways. And the welcome wasn't actually the reason I went back. I had other reasons to go back. I was invested in being part of these congregations for my training. But if I hadn't had that, if I hadn't had that, I'm not sure 
I would have gone back to either of those congregations. Not everybody has the luxury of otherwise of having to pick a congregation to go to. Now, of course, I'm on the other side. And I know that there are people who have not come back to my own congregation, to Monifeith Parish Church, because of how they have felt judged or excluded. And that breaks my heart. Because the reasons they felt judged or excluded have never been about faith or about God or about deeply held moral convictions. It has been about other things like dress or age or behaviour. I know of people on duty who have been moved position because of the clothes they were wearing on any given Sunday. I have seen and heard tutting and eye rolling and sighing at the presence of children in worship. I know of a family with a child with autism who was asked to leave because of the child's behaviour. I'm fairly sure I must have inadvertently made someone feel unwelcome either by my gender, my clothes, my body language, my words. I am not perfect in this and I take this opportunity to humbly and sincerely apologise to anyone who has not felt welcomed by me to church. And I cling to the promise of forgiveness and the direction to forgive from Matthew's Gospel. When people are not welcomed, or people are excluded on fundamentally unimportant points, that is not something new in our church, but it is always, always lamentable. Paul tells the Jesus community in Rome not to argue and squabble, especially when it comes to the unimportant things, at least in his eyes like food or holy days. That's not the substance of the faith, says Paul. It might be important to a given person, it might help them to live out their faith, but it is absolutely not for you to judge or make comment about or argue over. Leave all that to God. God will shape and grow and form that person. And you, you are to welcome. And why was this important, particularly in Roman community? Well, if you are gathering as a community, you might have to worry about what kind of food you are going to eat. I know certainly my friend Rabbi Kate would often just plump for the vegetarian option so she didn't have to worry about whether something was kosher or not. Indeed, I attended a conference last year where they went with default vegan, partly for food reasons and partly for environmental. But I thought it was a really interesting idea and I tell you what, the food was amazing. And then there's a question about whether Saturday is more important than Sunday, perhaps. Which day of the week should we rest? Which day of the week should we worship? We could spend energy arguing over all of this, saying what is and is not appropriate. But unless there is a deeper reason, and sometimes there are, sometimes there's questions of justice, particularly for the poorest amongst us, Sometimes there are reasons to question and to discuss, but where there's not, Paul urges us to leave it be, to live our differences in a way that is welcoming and non-judgmental. But I think this is particularly important for us right now because we won't be able to welcome people into church buildings as we once did. 
masks will cover our faces and our smiles and might make it difficult for some people to hear. We cannot shake hands, give hugs, pass the peace as we once did. We won't be singing. We won't be gathering and chatting and there'll be no tea, coffee, biscuits, fair trade or otherwise. Not yet anyway. So how do we welcome in this environment people to church and people as the church, the body of Christ? Well, perhaps first and foremost, it is important to place God at the very centre of everything. It was God who called you as a Christian, who formed and continues to form you in God's likeness. It was God too who brought this other person to the church or to you as a Christian. If the focus remains God, rather than ancillary practices of faith, we are less likely to judge, we are more likely to be curious and perhaps more inclined to affirm a spark of faith or wonder in the other person all to the glory of God. A really practical and obvious but perhaps often therefore forgotten point is we do not know enough. We do not have enough knowledge of the person in front of us, their inner world, their life experiences, their faith to make any kind of judgment, good or bad, on their relationship with God in general or right at this specific period of time and neither do we know how they might best worship God. It might be that they prefer eyes open to eyes closed when they pray. pray. Perhaps they prefer to sit to sing rather than stand. Perhaps they like to read their own Bible when it's read aloud in worship or perhaps just sit and listen. Only God knows all this. So let's leave it to God. And if, and if that's a struggle, if, for example, what someone is wearing into church is really rather important to you, beyond taking the time to question and wonder why that is, ask yourself this question. Who am I to judge this person? Who am I? Take to heart the truth that there is only one Lord, God incarnate in Christ and present in the Spirit. There is one God and it isn't us. So we are absolutely not free to lord it over others. For what is most important from our first breath to our last is our relationship with God and how that manifests in our relationship with others, particularly, although not exclusively, with our sisters and brothers in Christ. God who created, loves and welcomes us just as we are. God who created, loves and welcomes others however they are. God who became incarnate, who walked amongst us, who died a painful and humiliating death at human hands, who rose again to give new life to all. God who surrounds us and sustains us by the power of the Spirit. This God, our God must remain first and last, Alpha and Omega, our welcoming source of love from our first breath to our last. And may glory be to God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
a few announcements or intimations to share with you today. The first is very exciting news that Lorna Tunstall, the probationer at Barnhill St Margaret's, is now Minister-elect for Klein, linked with Kildonan and Loth Helmsdale. We send Lorna our heartiest congratulations, best wishes and God's blessing for her move to Brora. And if you didn't know where that is, it's further up the A9 than Dornach. Another big congratulations and celebrations for our own Marjorie Dick, who is celebrating her 99th birthday today. She doesn't look a, age, a day over the age of 71, does she? Many congratulations, Marjorie, and I hope you have a very happy and blessed day. Slightly more um, boring, maybe less exciting stuff. Um, and that's to do with worship in our buildings. Uh, the Sid Laws will confirm in the next week or so um, whether they are going to continue in the pattern that they have done over the last week. And when we know that, uh, they will share that with you. At Money Feath, we start this coming Tuesday, Tuesday the 15th, and we will have three services during the week. Tuesday at 6.30pm, Wednesday at 2pm, and Saturday at 11am. Places are starting to be booked, but there's still plenty left in all three services. If you wish to book a slot, um, you're to call Dorothy Cullock, 534844. Um, and uh, there'll be a video to let you see what it'll look like, what you might want to expect at the end of this service. Um, and I imagine there probably will be some spaces left um, on the day, but you're best to book if you want to attend a specific time. And despite what I've just said in my sermon about judging and what you wear, masks are required legally. And if your mask is on your face, it must cover your nose and your mouth and don't pull it away to talk to me or to sneeze. That's not the point, OK? Another video that we're going to tag on at the end after the video about um, Money Feath Parish Church Building is um, about our Godly Play Stories online. This is a wee initiative I am trialling over the next few weeks to allow perhaps our younger members of a congregation, perhaps families, um, grandparents and grandchildren to enjoy stories together, to wonder together um, and have some resources. And there's a bit more information on that video, which you are um, encouraged to watch and engage with. As we work and live out God's kingdom, each and every moment of each and every day, let us rejoice and be glad that God is with us always. Let us give thanks. Our prayers of thanks and our prayers for others. We join our hearts in prayer. Lord of life, we bring our prayers of thanksgiving to you. Thank you for the talents and skills you've given us, the things we do well and enjoy doing, the things that contribute to the well-being of those around us, Teach us to recognise that we all belong together and that we have something to give and something to receive in our common life. Father, we thank you for the opportunities of this new day, for the richness and beauty of the created world spread around us at this time, when the bright colours of summer mellow into autumn. We thank you for the singing of gathering birds and the brightness of the stars. Most of all, we thank you for love, given and received, for joys and sorrows shared in families and in friendship. You have blessed us in so much. Receive now our gratitude. We pray for those of whom life makes intolerable demands, those facing famine through blighted harvest, families fleeing as refugees, suffering persecution, enduring war, struggling with injustice. We remember folk afraid of the future, haunted by the past. Lord, in your love, bring a better future to those without hope. Loving God, we each have friends 
or family who specially need our prayers at this time. We name them before you in the silence. Lord, reach out to them and put a new song in their hearts. We pray for the children in our local schools, eager to learn, eager to play. God, bless our young ones and for ourselves and our dear ones, we pray. Bring us back to you as children to a loving Father and let us find in you our peace. We bring our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. walk in the light of God, welcoming all in God's name. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Hi everybody and welcome. It's Fee and it's Cal and we're here to share some exciting new things that we're going to try this autumn. It's called Godly Play Stories Online and it's a way for you to engage with some of the stories that we might tell be it in BB or in school or perhaps even in church in a way that we can access safely online and for you to do some wondering at home and out and about. It comes in about three or four parts. The first part is a recorded story. And to start with, we're going to use the stories recorded by my friend Andrew. Andrew recorded these stories for Barn Hill over the summer and he has allowed me to share them with you. So we're going to start with Andrew, but I will do some stories soon as well. So the first thing you can do is check out the story on our YouTube channel. The second thing there is, is a little pack with different resources in it and let me just look, let you see what this resource pack has so there's a sheet with all the wondering questions and what is included in the pack but also would be some songs you might want to look up that are related to this story and other things you might want to do to get creative and in this pack are things like word searches and join the dots and coloring in and the last thing that's involved 
is our Facebook group. Now you don't have to be part of this if you don't want to, but it might be a way for you to share either your wondering or things you've done or created. And if you're under the age of 16, or you're a vulnerable adult, you need to get your parent or carer to fill in this consent form as well. So that will be part of our packs. And you can join that. And it's a closed group. Only those who want to be part of it will see any of that. And we can share some of the things in there as well. So that's what it's all about. We hope to start very, very soon. And um, I'm excited to see if you enjoy it, what you like, what you don't like. Um, and, if, and if you do like it, we will keep it going. Um, after October break. That's all for now. I hope you stay well. Take care and God bless. When you come to church now, it will look and feel a little bit different from normal. As you arrive, we will ask you to wait, if you have to wait, at two meter intervals. And I'm hoping we will have some lovely hearts to mark the wall or the floor at the two metres interval. Just remember, love your neighbour enough to stay two metres apart. The next thing you'll need to do is wear your mask when you enter church. Cover nose, mouth and leave it there. Sanitize your hands. I'm taking my mask off just now to help you hear what I'm telling you, but please remember when you're inside the building, keep your nose and mouth covered at all times. When you enter, there'll be someone waiting to take your personal details. If you've booked, your name and number will be already with them, but they will also ask you to confirm that you are symptom free and haven't been asked to self-isolate in the last 14 days. If you do have any symptoms, continuous cough, a fever or loss of taste or smell, please don't come to church. Or if you develop them on the way here, then let us know and go home and get yourself safe. From here, we'll invite you to go through the quiet room and on into the sanctuary. As you come through the quiet room, if you wish to leave an offering, the place is here. And as you come into the sanctuary, you will be greeted and asked to sit at a particular table. On our tables, we have some tissues and some hand sanitizers if you feel you need them at any time. If you do need to cough or sneeze, um, please feel free to use these tissues um, uh, to catch your cough or sneeze. During the service, as I've said before, I'm afraid there'll be no singing um, and you are required to keep your face covering on. And as I said, keep it covering your nose and your mouth and leave it there for the duration. At the end of the service, please remain in your seats until you're invited by one of the hospitality team to leave. When you're asked to leave, please stand up and make your way towards the fire exit. Sanitize your hands once more. And leave via these doors. And go on to wherever you're going next. And please, I know you really want to chat to folk, but please don't congregate outside and allow everybody to leave quickly and safely. It's not what we're used to, but nothing in these last six months 
have been what we're used to. God calls us together wherever we are. Let us come together and worship God's holy name. God bless you. See you soon.